What is going on guys? It was quite an exciting weekend for Tesla news and there were some stories that I think did not get enough credit. So today we're gonna dive into all the Tesla news and there's a few extra EV juicy stories. Let's jump into it. Woo! First of all guys, would you be a massive favor, head down below, subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. I know some people haven't been getting notified, so please do that. And also say hello in the comments section. Thank you for all the support on these videos. You have been wonderful so far. So the Tesla news has been interesting this weekend to say the least. There is a very long video of Elon talking about lots of different things, which has provided us with lots of things to talk about today. So that is what I am starting with. So yes, you may have heard of Elon on Clubhouse, which I think is like a, a group talking thing, like where you, everyone's on their microphones and you can get invited to the Clubhouse and talk on there. So Elon was on a live Clubhouse and he was talking all kinds of things. So one thing that was really interesting, that he did briefly mention Bitcoin. I know we spoke about this in the past, about the speculation of Tesla using Bitcoin. A lot of people didn't really agree with me, but it looks like recently that Elon's changed his mind on his tune on it. Um, he has come around to the idea. A lot of this has been sparked from the whole GME, Robin Hood thing, AMC. Uh, if you don't know about that, go Google it. Um, but that does come into the end of this, this uh, Clubhouse chat. So he said, and I quote, I'll go over to Dan Held, which is a great guy to follow for Bitcoin. Um, I am late to the party, but I am a supporter of Bitcoin. So there you go. That is very interesting news. I think this one's gone unnoticed a little bit. Obviously, Elon has now recently put Bitcoin into his Twitter handle under the description, hashtag Bitcoin, which is major. It's pumped Bitcoin up quite a bit. Uh, it has since fallen a little bit, but it still has propped the price up a little bit. And I think it possibly means we will see some Bitcoin on the balance sheet of Tesla and SpaceX. Just my opinion. I said this way before Elon endorsed it. I thought it was coming anyway. Uh, but yeah, this for me confirms that I think that is going to happen. Uh, so talking of the whole AMC, um, GME, Robin Hood debacle, if you if you tuned into it, fantastic. I don't really need to catch you up to date, but basically... What happened is some Redditors have a club called Wall Street Bets. Uh, it's a, a subreddit, sorry, called Wall Street Bets. And they found an exploitation where they could punish um, some hedge funds and some short sellers. And they started doing that. They started punishing these hedge funds and short sellers, which obviously Elon is not a fan of. So he's been very vocal about this. And then Robinhood, after that, quite quickly shut down trades on these stocks which kind of let the short sellers and the traders and the institutions and the hedge funds, the hedge funds most importantly, it let them off the hook a little bit and Elon was very annoyed. That's why he put hashtag Bitcoin because it's decentralized. He was very annoyed. Uh, everyone was furious at Robin Hood. They limited trading. Um, they stopped trading at one point. They only allowed sell orders which drove the price down which made it look like they are on the side of the big man, which obviously Robin Hood, kind of ironic. But anyway, I have no opinion to give you on that. We are not here for that. Elon did, however, grill the CEO of Robin Hood on Clubhouse. Um, basically, again, if you want to watch that, it's very hard to find online at the moment. I would suggest the way I just listened to it was on Meet Kevin, very big YouTuber, um, Meet Kevin posted quite a large portion of the call um, and you get to hear him, Elon, interviewing, interrogating the CEO of Robin Hood and he goes really deep and he basically asks him what the hell happened, what was going off and if you want to see that, go over to Meet Kevin, you can hear that. But yeah, props to Elon on this one. He really does look out for the little guy and I think a lot of people see billionaire and think, you know what, 
he's a rich billionaire, doesn't care about the little man. He's not bothered. But I disagree, actually. I disagree. And Elon showed his true colours and he really did dig deep on the guy, didn't let up on him. And yeah, turns out that Robin Hood kind of, he didn't really accept any responsibility in it. Um, again, I'm not going to go into the details, make your own decision. But well done to Elon for going into that. So Ryan McCaffrey puts... Um, if a £5,000 sedan is pulling off these numbers, the new Roadster is basically going to time travel, isn't it? Elon Musk question mark. So he shows the the plaid plus uh, numbers. So the 0 to 60, quarter mile fastest ever. Under 1.99 seconds, 0 to 60. Um, under nine seconds, quarter mile, 1,100 plus horsepower, etc. And then Elon Musk puts under that new Roadster is part rocket. Now, I think people have taken this too literally and they're thinking that, oh, that means that every single Roadster is going to have this SpaceX package. I think he was saying it as kind of a joke. But if we open this tweet up, um, he did actually comment under that, underneath it. Tesla owners of Silicon Valley, can it fly? And Elon Musk put a little. So I think he is referring to the SpaceX Roadster at that point. People still think that my prediction of the Roadster being able to fly or hover is a stupid idea. I, I actually think he's going to try and do it. The, the cars are full of party tricks. This is something that Tesla are known for. If they are going to have articulated tips, uh, rocket tips on the car, thrusters, then... It would be so easy to program them to articulate towards the floor. I think they'll do it. But here we go. For me, that is a little bit of confirmation. But the new Roadster is going to be insane. I think the standard one, we're going to see that 1.75, 1.8 seconds. Um, to get down from 1.99 seconds, it's really hard to get move those last few digits. So 1.7 seconds would be huge. It would be major. And then, like I said before, that SpaceX Roadster could be doing one second, not to 60. We will have to wait and see, but yeah, it's pretty nuts. So, a little bit of an update on the Tesla van, and something that's very exciting for me as a UK viewer. A van like this van right here on Tesla Ratti, this, this render that they've got, which looks like it could possibly be a Ford Transit with the front end of some sort of Tesla. Um, is, is a very exciting prospect. It's exactly what I need right now. I don't need a Model X. I need a Tesla van. But um, the reason this was sparked back up is because uh, someone mentioned to Elon, um, he recalled a tweet that Elon mentioned, and this is the tweet back from 2018. Shame that's not a Tesla van because I really, really, really need a good, tough as nails electric trades van. We burn fuel like crazy. Elon put, maybe interesting to work with Daimler Mercedes on electric Sprinter. That's a great van. We will inquire. I agree. The, um, the Mercedes Sprinter, one of my favorite vans, um, would love an electric Mercedes Sprinter, which I think Mercedes are actually working on at the moment. But um, Elon said in a, I think this was at the earnings call, someone recalled this tweet and they said, I think Tesla is definitely going to make an electric van at some point. So in the next five years, electric van, I think we'll see it in the next five years. Uh, but it's nothing more than sort of confirmation that it's going to happen. I think obviously Tesla is just scaling the vehicles. Giga Berlin would be sensible to produce a van. Europe would love it. And so would I. But yeah, an electric van that could actually do some decent range for once would be a game changer. This is where people who think Tesla's roof has been met, the ceiling has been hit. You are very wrong. There's just so unlimited endless possibilities. Once you've got that battery tech, it's unlimited. If they can produce the battery, they can produce any vehicle that they want. Texas Giga Press. So for the Cybertruck Press, I'm guessing. The installation of Tesla Gigafactory Texas first Gigapress has made significant process. Part of a mammoth Gigapress, IDRA Group, made for Tesla's Model Y single piece casting, was spotted in the Giga Texas complex this week before the company's earning call. And this week, one of the machines has already taken form. The Model Y Gigapress is the first that will be installed at Giga Texas. 
and is a good sign of progress that all electric crossover vehicle production in Tesla Austin factory. The exact number of Giga pressers Giga factory will have is unknown. Okay, so it must be for the for the Model Y then. Um, apparently, the press for the cyber for the Cybertruck is supposed to be ridiculously big. Um, so yeah. Tesla Model Y single-piece casting ramp may gain more momentum in the future. The Model Y doesn't seem to be the only vehicle with a single-piece underbody. Tesla plans to order an even bigger casting press for the Cybertruck's rear underbody casting. For example, uh, for, for example, sorry, terrible reading. And there are indications that the new Tesla Model S Plaid and Plaid Plus may feature a mega casted underbody as well. So yeah, um, so this is for the Model Y, I'm guessing, at Giga Austin. Uh, so that is some of the vehicles that will be produced at, in Texas. Okay, what everyone wanted to talk about is the controversy surrounding the new yoke con um, steering wheel. I don't know what everyone's fuss is about. So we saw the yoke first appear, I think, in the, the Roadster prototype and then we saw it again with the Cybertruck prototype and now it looks as if we are going to see it for real in the Model S and people are kicking off about it now I always thought it was a nice design I, I like the yoke um, I, I guess some people are worried about going hand over so doing a full, full rotations of the uh, of the steering wheel I'm not I, don't, I, I didn't think that would be a problem. You'd just go spin, spin. It'd just be like a normal steering wheel, right? Am I wrong? Um, but one of the um, issues people are saying is safety is going to be a problem. I like that. So only, you're only missing the top. You've got the bottom still. And look, we've all said this. Tesla are strongly aiming towards autonomous vehicles and autonomous driving. Reduction of the steering wheel is going to happen quite quickly with Tesla. They're trying to get rid of the thing. They don't even want a steering wheel. Um, so yeah, that's where they're going towards. They're aiming towards these tiny little steering wheels until there's nothing in there. And yeah, you just get in the car. So an interesting thing about the yoke, which is super exciting, is the stalkless drive-in. And, you know, I think I, I just grazed over that when I did the, the reveal of the Model S. The reason that the stalkless driving is so cool is because the car predicts which way it's supposed to go. So it will predict what, um, what kind of situation you're in, in terms of the cameras will take in data and they'll look at the road and everything. And they'll take that in and then they'll decide that you're going forward and you will go forward. So that's how it's going to work, mainly automatic. Uh, selection of drive, neutral, reverse, all that kind of stuff. Um, it will decide for you. And also people are like, well, that's terrible. What happens if it gets it wrong? You can just override it on the screen. So no problem there, guys. But yeah, what's the controversy? Comment down below. Who is for yoke? To yoke or not yoke? I'm, I like the yoke. I like it. I think it's better. The, I mean, the steering wheels in the Teslas are all right, but I like the yoke. There's no Tesla logo, though. I love the yoke, and I love the stalkless driving. I think it's amazing. There we go. So this one is big news, I think, very big news, and it marks a point where they need they need to get this done very soon. Elon has um, said that it looks like we're going to see what early release candidates to hit the streets as early as summer of the Tesla Roadster. Now. What does this mean? It simply means that they're going to have a, a, a production version. So it's going to look like the production version. It's going to be what you're going to receive as a production car version of the Tesla Roadster driving around on the street so people can see it. People can see what's going off. Uh, it's not going to be in full production, but it will be the production version, the finished version. And he is saying as early as summer. So we hope, well, I mean, I'm thinking this year. Release candidates for next generation Tesla Roadster may hit the streets later this year. On the heels of the Tesla Model S Plaid Plus release, Elon Musk reminded everyone that there's still so much to look forward to this year. Finishing engineering this year 
Production starts next year. So he's in, refer- in regards to the Roadster. Aiming to have release candidate design drivable late summer. The Tesla CEO replied when asked for the Roadster on Twitter. Uh, tri-motor drive system, advanced battery work were important p- precursors, he added. So basically, the stuff that's going in the Plaid Model S and the Plaid Model S Plus is going in the Roadster. The tech's there now. So now they just need to get this body designed, put that kind of stuff in there. And they're going to have a pre-released version, the completed version on the roads by the end of the year. For me, this is major. Um, I have kind of come to a decision, guys. My Plaid Model S pre-order does not arrive till 2022. We've news that the Roadster is going to be in full production in 2022. I might change my reservation to a Roadster. Need to speak to a couple people about that, my business partners. Uh, If they find a Roadster practical and um, condonable, I don't think they'll find it condonable. But anyway, I'm thinking about changing it to the Roadster. So the Roadster is closer than we think. It's on the way. And once people start seeing this on the road, I think it's just progression towards production of the Roadster. So it's going to be very interesting indeed. Um, Yeah, I'm excited about it. It's my dream car. It's my dream car. Tesla Model 3 in Europe has had reference to a HEPA filter uh, in the German leasing update. Now, it's on the Tesla website. It talks about uh, HEPA filters. I think this is a mistake, personally. I think this is a mistake, but uh, people are talking about it. I thought only S and X and China Model Y have the HEPA filter. So maybe the new Model 3s coming out of China have got HEPA filters, and that's what we're seeing in Europe right now. I'm not 100% sure. We have seen China um, Model 3s coming out in right-hand drive variants, and I'm guessing we've seen them coming out in Europe as well. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. But HEPA filter, it is probably coming to the Model 3. I think this might just be a mistake, but it's got to come to the Model 3. It's on the Model Y. It's on the Model S. It's on the Model X. If it, if it was just on the S and X, I could see that maybe it wasn't coming to the Model 3. But the fact that they put it on the Model Y, it's going to come to the Model 3. I think this is just a mistake, or maybe it's slightly preemptive of what is coming in the future. But there you go. Make of it which you will. Okay, and in other EV news. So that large portion was for Tesla news. And now this tiny portion is for other EV news. Because other EV news is kind of small. It's kind of small. So, um... The Ford engineers are having some fun with the Mach-E and they've got on the motor, electric ponies live here. Uh, Or live here, live here, I think it would be. It's quite nice that whoever's designing these cars, they're obviously enjoying what they're doing. Um, So it's good that they're probably hiring some of the right people. Uh, I I, I don't know what this says for the the Mustang Mach-E. It's not really, I, I, I hope to get my hands on a, on a version soon to give it a test ride and everything. But um, yeah, it's not for me. I'd, I'd still choose a Tesla. But you know, it is a sign that we're moving in the right direction. But yeah, electric ponies live here. It's nice that they're sort of using the Ford. Um, pony. Pony branding. Mustang branding. I don't know what they're saying. I don't know what all that was. But um, they're using a bit of Ford and a bit of electric and they're merging it together and they're having a bit of fun. It's a good sign, guys. It's a good sign. Okay, and then the Rivian R1T looks surprisingly large besides the Model X in real-world sighting. So I am going to be, um, uh, let's have a look at this. I'm going to be as unbiased as possible. First time watching the video. Let's have a look at this. Okay, so first of all, let's try and pause that right at the start. So, um, obviously, the Rivian is slightly closer to us. So, it's going to appear slightly bigger. Um, it does look taller. And the wheels look bigger than the Model X, for sure. Looks a bit dated next to the Model X, which is kind of weird, because the Model X hasn't been updated for a long time. But There we go. And there's another one. I mean, they are tanks. They are big. They're big vehicles. Okay, so, yep. 
Rivian's bigger. That's easy. Um, obviously, the Cybertruck, um, the Cybertruck, Cybertruck's going to be huge. The, um, the Model X is in a low stance. It's not, although it's a huge car and there's so much space inside of it, um, it's not gigantic. It's not gigantic. Whereas the Rivian does look pretty big. Um, so yeah, uh, it's bigger. Are you going to buy one now because it's bigger? I don't know. It's bigger. I like the Rivian. Uh, again, I would love to get my hands on a test model. And the last thing that I want to show you guys, I was, um, I did not even know this was a thing. Now, comment down below if you know something on this. Maybe I've seen a, a, a prototype version, but I don't know. So, I was driving up a road very close to mine in the Model X, and I saw a fellow EV, and it really sparked my interest. It was the Honda E. I'll put the photos up, in fact, and just have a look at these photos. Um, it has no wing mirrors. It doesn't have any wing mirrors. It has little cameras for wing mirrors. Now, I didn't think that was legal in, in the world, or in, uh, I, I'd not seen that before. So, if it is, maybe regulations allow it in the UK, and that's why we see the Honda E in the UK. But for me, it was pretty cool. So, it's a very nice looking car. Again, I would love to test drive it and give it an honest review. And I think for me, something like the Honda E is a car that I could actually get on with, an EV that I could get on with, because my, one of my biggest gripes for all EVs in the world, bar Teslas, is the supercharging network. It, it destroys every other, for me, possibility of owning an electric car. I wouldn't own any other electric cars pretty much because of the supercharging network. It just doesn't exist for other vehicles. But the Honda E is not designed for long haul driving. It is designed for city driving, driving to your local, your next neighboring city, um, around town. Yeah, it's not, it's not designed for those long road trips. So if it was for me and it was my daily driver, I could actually see myself getting on with that car. It looked really nice. Um, some people think it's an ugly looking car. It's a quirky looking car, I like it. Night is very small. Um, so I'm doing something at the moment, guys. If you are the owner, this is, I'm gonna go back to that exact car, I'm gonna pin a note on that car. If you are the owner of a new EV, so one of the newer EVs, like um, the Zoe, the, the, the latest Zoe, you've got the new Corsa, uh, we've got the Honda E, we've got um, the Mustang, we've got the Polestar 2, these kind of cars, if you are the owner of one of those cars and you fancy doing a car swap with me for the Model 3 or for the Model X for a few days, two or three days, please um, get at me on Twitter or I might just drop an email in the description below and we'll do a car swap for a few days. You can have one of, the, one of my cars, Model X or the Model 3 and I will drive your car around like this beautiful Honda E and, I'll, and then I can do an honest review of the car. Uh, I could capture some great cinematography I'm not, I'm gonna look after your car and I'm hoping you'll look after mine. And yeah, it, it would just be nice and fun if you're in, cause I think there's a lot of people who are getting into EVs now that are probably looking at buying Teslas and probably just wanna test drive one. So I'm happy to swap for a few days. Um, so if you are one of those owners, drop me an email. Uh, I'll, pop in, I'll pop the email in the description below. And yeah, I really wanna start expanding what we are filming here. We're filmmakers at the end of the day, so reviews are my bread and butter. That's a thing I enjoy doing, and, and it looks like you guys enjoy that kind of aspect of the filming as well. So, thank you for watching, guys. If you are thinking about buying a Tesla, there's a link in the description for 1,000 free supercharging miles. It gets me 1,000 free supercharging miles. It is much appreciated. Thank you. Um, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Oh yeah, subscribe, comment, like, and go follow me on Twitter, guys. I've got no one following me.